Hello, my name is Gabrielle DeFrancesco, and I'm here with Dr. McGriff talking about our new Chromebooks. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you. How about yourself? I'm good. Excellent. Um, so I heard we just got new Chromebooks. Yes, yes, it's an exciting time. How's that going so far? Um, it's really going well, to be honest with you. Uh, we really are in the third week of school, and what we've been able to do is really distribute close to 1,800 Chromebooks just within this building alone. We also have the Roosevelt campus that have received their Chromebooks. So district wired, you know, everyone is really locked in and has their Chromebooks. Uh, more importantly, we really established the systems on how to go ahead and not only distribute them, but also go ahead and get them addressed um, and when different issues come up. So uh, we're in a good place right now. That sounds exciting. amazing. Yes, nice. Thanks. Um, so what are the expectations of teachers and students when they use these Chromebooks? Well, I think right now, um, you know, there's, there's really a lofty goal that we always have, that everyone will go in and use the Chromebooks and love the Chromebooks. But the reality is there needs to be an organic process of just kind of getting used mm -hmm. to the devices. Um, and like, how do we change our instruction based upon it? Um, we were in classrooms earlier this week, you know, myself and all the other assistant principals and principal, and we really saw a lot of good things. So one expectation, just using them, just learn to go ahead and have that as a tool to not only gain instruction, but to even to manage your own personal and kind of professional life. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do end up having a problem with these Chromebooks, where would you go? Like, oh, who would you go to? That is a really a great question. So I think right now, um, again, this is a work in progress. Right now, the, the cafeteria has a couple of places. When we first started, it was room 130, right, which is now going to be known as the Chromebook Lounge. Mm -hmm. But if you look just across the way um, near the salad line, you will actually see this kind of L-shaped area um, that will you actually have an IT person there first thing in the morning and during lunches. Now, that is going to last till the end of September. Then in October, all students will just be expected to go to the library in order to get a lot of that different, um, you know, uh, issues resolved um, in what's now going to be kind of known as like an IT hub of the library area. So IT will be at the tables, just to uh, clarify? Yes, IT will be at the head tables the rest of this month, and then when we move into October, they will then be along with, you know, BJ and the rest of the, the wonderful crew at the library there um, to kind of help support a lot of the Chromebook initiatives. Okay. Um, so how do we care for our Chromebooks? Like, what are the do's and don'ts? Well, you know, I think um, I, I kind of jokingly said this with um, at the parent um, back to school night, but I really said, think of it as like a small pet, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Chromebook needs to breathe. The Chromebook doesn't like extreme cold and hot. The Chromebook doesn't like to necessarily be dropped or things like that. So almost the same principles, just, you know, caring for it as if it's a valuable device. Um, you know, it has the capacity to really connect you with the entire world. So I think, you know, holding that value of that device and what it can do for you should also kind of like kind of be instilled in how you go about just mm -hmm. kind of managing it. Um, everyone received a cloth that write the screen down. Screens are the, the, the one piece that like gets damaged the most. So really taking care of your screen and being very, very cautious with it. Like, you know, not walking around with the Chromebook open and making sure it's in its case that we've um, provided you. Okay. Uh, it's really critical. Okay. Yes. And, um, what is the biggest problems you have faced with Chromebooks so far? Well, right now, just everyone learning that, you know, um, to go ahead and manage it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes we have a student or two, maybe, you know, um, you know, leave it somewhere and then, oh, I forgot, and they go back and they return to that area and it's there. The school population is wonderful because when they see the missing, they automatically turn it into someone that will go ahead and get it back mm -hmm. to a place where they can do, have it returned to them. So that's awesome. Um, the other piece is just really a lot of like um, small issues that are like t technical. Um, students are learning that their um, ID that they have for their Gmail also kind of gets them in. And sometimes when we have incidents happen where the Chromebook is lost, um, we actually can shut down the Chromebook. And all of a sudden, people realize they might have picked up someone else's. And then we return it to them. So we're kind of figuring all that out as we go along. But it's an exciting process. Okay. And um, what happens if you break your Chromebook? Like, does the school pay for that? Yeah, so right now, um, I think we have a little bit of latitude. Um, accidents happen, so we're definitely aware of that, right? And so we've been able to go ahead and replace and really fix Chromebooks right there on the spot. Um, we've not had a situation where they've been stolen and, like, we haven't been able to recover them. Um, what we do have is really just kind of the latitude to kind of look at it case by case. If we determine, like, it was something where there was some level of, malicious intent, like they just threw it down, you know, in a fit of rage. 
well, then we may have hold that mm -hmm. person responsible. Otherwise, you know, the students will go ahead and have a new device provided to them because we want their education to continue. Okay, and I heard the administrators can track our Chromebooks. How's that going? How does that work? Well, what it is, is not necessarily tracking, but what will happen is as you're in the building and you, you want to go to different Wi-Fi rooms, like there are different kind of like zones, mm -hmm. right? And so that's really a great way for us to go ahead and make sure that Chromebooks are where they're supposed to be. So a student's like, oh my gosh, my Chromebook is stolen. No, you just left it in the classroom maybe two or three periods ago mm -hmm. and didn't realize it. So that's where, why that really comes into play. It's an important resource because it allows us to really just kind of keep an overall understanding of here goes this valuable item, here's how we can go ahead and locate it and ensure it gets back to the student. Okay. Yeah. And what about our hotspots? Woo, the hotspots are <laughs> a hot issue, huh? So the hotspots, um, first of all, I think what we're talking about is this is a very powerful tool. It really helps bridge that gap between school and home, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is, is the hotspot is um, we're going in kind of like clusters, chunks. Right now, we have 500 waiting to go ahead and right. be distributed. We're like over 300 now. So we're going to try to kind of like have it as a clear block and a clear demarcation point. Once we get to like 450, 500, we're going to stop, go ahead and distribute those. Okay? That should happen within the next probably three to four business days. Um, we're going to be respectful as Roosevelt went on ahead and they kind of got Chromebooks earlier. So they're going to go first. So by the end of next week, I anticipate that everyone should start to see those hotspots roll out. The way we will distribute them is that we will go ahead and have an area where we will go ahead and give the hotspots out during lunches, and okay. lunches only. And then what they will do is they will come up with their ID, get their hotspot. They need to kind of have like a little informal training on how to use it, and then they're good to go. And remember, that's gonna remain with them for the remainder of their time here at Northtown Area High School. So if you're a freshman, you literally will get that device for the remainder of your high school career until you get ready to graduate or you leave Norristown Area High School. Now, does that include summers? That is a great question. <laughs> I think the reality is that's something that we're gonna really have to explore with our student body and our parents. Um, do students want to have those Chromebooks during the <laughs> summer? Um, you know, it's a great tool to kind of maybe offer some like different insights. Of course, we know we have summer readings and projects for some of like, you know, our courses. So I think that might be a really great idea. What do you think, Gab? Um, I think it would be a great idea only because a lot of teachers give out summer work mm. and it would be really helpful in the summer. You know, some people just don't have Wi-Fi at home yeah. and it will be really helpful, especially with the personal hotspots as well. Awesome. So I think they would be really useful during the summer. I appreciate that feedback. I'll yeah. be sure to use it. Um, so when, you're not, when a student is not in school, mm -hmm. um, is there still stuff that is off limits? Off limits, could you clarify? Like, like I know some people were saying Netflix. Netflix okay. is off limits. Does that still apply at home? So what's happening is the same um, filtration system that we have in school applies at home, right? So that doesn't change whether you go to a Wi-Fi signal, like even at a McDonald's or something like that. The filter is still coming through that Chromebook. So it's only going to allow certain things to go ahead and come through. Okay. Um, I think it's also really clear to caution that even with those hotspots, um, even though they're unlimited, after a certain like um, kind of like movement of like gigabytes used, it will start to slow down and not be effective. So streaming might become very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, even playing YouTube might become more challenging. So it's important to kind of recognize, you know, hey, this is a great resource, but it may have some limitations. And will that still be, like in the future? Will that still be limited or? Like, how's that going to work? Another great question, Gab, because I think what we're looking at is we're really at the infancy of this initiative. Mm -hmm. If we start to see um, a legitimate demand to kind of have a lot of those resources that are currently being blocked open, then we got to look at them kind of like step by step and piece by piece to make sure they're valuable enough that we can go ahead and open that resource, but also keep in mind the integrity of like we don't want people to abuse, you know, those opportunities and mm -hmm. privileges. And I know a lot of students have been asking this, but are we allowed to c customize our Chromebooks? Customization <laughs> is really a great piece. So there's two types of customization, mm -hmm. right? There's the actual software customization. So there are little things that you can do to kind of tweak the inside, you know, um, of your Chromebook. Now, clearly in our policy, it says that we're trying to shy away from that. Okay. Um, because at some point, we want to go ahead and kind of bring them in, make sure they're kind of up and running, refurbishing, and sometimes things that we customize like software-wise might go ahead and maybe kind of run in with our, our, our general updates. 
So that's why there's, again, some caution. Okay. The outside, that is a big question because I understand we have close to 1,800 devices that look very similar. Um, so that's something we're going to really table for now. At this point in time, customization, we're holding off. But when we find ways that we can customize and not damage the devices, I think we might have a winning combination. Okay. Yes. And um, what's the policies? Because we didn't, as students, we didn't really sign anything. Okay. So I was just wondering what that was okay. like. Okay. So when I went through the, um, the actual kind of onboarding, that was really kind of a de facto way of going ahead and, and showing you and sharing the policy. Um, it's kind of like the same principle. You don't necessarily sign different things to get textbooks. Well, all this Chromebook is is just an electronic notebook, you know? So when people raise the level like, oh, you need to sign this and that, not necessarily because we don't do the same thing with our textbooks. Mm -hmm. We're taking the same principle, right? Okay. Yep. And so what we're doing is we're just saying this is just understood to be a tool that is really valuable and everyone should use. Yes, I agree more. Excellent. Um, so thank you again for doing this interview. It was really nice. Pleasure. Thank you guys so much. Of course.